An armed uprising in Russia has come to an abrupt end after the head of the Wagner mercenary group ordered his troops to stand down. Yevgeny Prigozhin abandoned his attempt to overthrow Russia's military commanders after striking a deal with the Kremlin. Wagner forces have now withdrawn from the southern city of Rostov-on-Don, where they earlier occupied the district military headquarters. Prigozhin says Wagner is pulling its troops back to avoid spilling Russian blood. The Kremlin says he will move to Belarus and all criminal charges against him and his soldiers will be withdrawn. DW's former Moscow bureau chief Yuri Reshetto joins us now from Riga. That's because DW is banned from reporting in Russia. Hello, Yuri. Uh, so a day after the attempted rebellion, what's happening in the capital and areas that were briefly controlled by Wagner forces? Well, Russia is obviously trying to get back to normality as quickly as possible, Eddie. Um, as if nothing had happened, uh, things are being downplayed that seemed so big and so important yesterday. Uh, the highways to Moscow, which were blocked, will be reopened. It's said uh, damaged streets are supposed to be renovated within two days. Buses are running between the Russian capital and the cities in the south. Uh, at the same time, the so-called counter-terrorist operation regime introduced in Moscow and the Moscow region continues to operate. Uh, Kremlin spokesman Peskov said that it would be cancelled in the very near future, though um, also the Moscow authorities decided not to cancel the day off that uh, was scheduled yesterday for tomorrow, Monday. So many Moscovites joke and uh, thank Prigozhin for an extra day off. <laughs> That's interesting. But we've seen a lot of pictures across social media. What do you make of the images of people celebrating Wagner forces as they left Rostov? Well, it was a very bizarre day for many people in Russia, of course, and yes, especially uh, for the Russians in Rostov. Uh, when tanks came to the city, into the city, people gathered in the center, some of them posed in front of the tanks and took pictures, some talked to the soldiers. It seemed that the armed men were for many in Rostov a kind of attraction rather than the real threat. But Everyone was at the same time, of course, worried because no one knew how this will end. So when finally the troops withdrew, of course, there was, there was relief. And of course, maybe one of the other or the other was happy that Prigozhin had publicly humiliated the Kremlin and the Russian president. But we shouldn't be naive and think that Russians now are suddenly rising up against Putin and demonstrating against the war. I definitely don't think uh, that uh, will be happening soon. And now, as part of the deal with the Kremlin, Prigozhin was to relocate to Belarus. Do we know his whereabouts? No, we don't hear anything about where Prigozhin is at the moment. We just know that the Kremlin spokesman Peskov said yesterday that he should go to Belarus and be freed from any persecution, which sounds weird given that just yesterday morning Prigozhin faced up to 20 years in prison. So, what all that's been happening, what impact could this have on Vladimir Putin's grip on power? I think, Eddie, that Putin's power has definitely been weakened since yesterday. Uh, I don't know if that was Prigozhin's goal, but Prigozhin showed that something is uh, pretty wrong in the Russian state, in a country where people uh, could be could be put behind bars for years uh, if they protest against the power of the state. In this country, one man takes up arms in hand and makes demands. And that's why the Kremlin will now do everything possible, I think, to make yesterday's mutiny forgotten as quickly as possible. But uh, one shouldn't think that uh, Putin's power is crumbling. Uh, we saw yesterday that everyone from the Federation Council and the Duma to Chechen leader Kadyrov really uh, all backed Putin, uh, at least publicly. And now, after this failed coup, uh, it will be interesting to see whether the laws in Russia will be even tightened. Mm. Quick one on this before you go. How is all this being reported on in Russia? Well, look, many people in Russia remembered yesterday the 1990s when the then-Soviet President Gorbachev was being held in Crimea and there was an attempt coup. At that time, Soviet television continuously aired Tchaikovsky's ballet Swan Lake. Since then, it's a kind of symbol for political uprising in Russia. This time, the news anchor of the Russian state television appeared in the night and interrupted the current program to report on Prigozhin and... You could see that the state propaganda didn't really know how to deal with someone who just the day before yesterday was being celebrated as a hero in Russia. DW's Yuri Rashetto, thank you.
Come on, this, let's welcome Mikhail Kasyanov on the show. He was Russia's prime minister from 2000 to 2004 in Vladimir Putin's first administration. Now he's with the opposition People's Freedom Party in Russia. He joins us from the Latvian capital, Riga. Hello, sir. Welcome again. As things stand now in Russia, Hello. who is the most powerful man in Russia right now? Oh, yesterday's deal was presented as compromise, but in fact, we know that it's Putin's defeat. That's absolutely that. Putin's power, Putin's authority started to be questioned. And in fact, just in the minds of people, especially people in the ruling elite, they cannot see Putin anymore as a moderator, as a protector of their interests. And that's why just I think just the problem, the problem of Putin uh, future started to be questioned. And I think we you know, came to the period beginning of Putin's era. end. I think just we will see, we'll see next week, tomorrow, the day after just few days, we will see what what Putin would say, because just right now to keep silence is not possible because it's just people confused. Mm. Nobody informed them. Minister of Defense didn't provide them with the information during the whole day yesterday. Minister of, of, of Emergency didn't inform population what to do. People were shocked. Two cities with the one million uh, population each was simply surrendered, and uh, authorities didn't play at all. The system looks as weak. Mm. I mean, look, you, you're calling this... Putin's defeat. But when we spoke yesterday, you said President Putin had 48 hours max to stop Prigozhin's rebellion. Less than 24 hours later, it appears to be over. So isn't this a win for Putin after all? Yesterday, yesterday when yeah. we saw these Yes, yesterday when we saw all these, um, uh, I would say, just mutiny operations started, as I said, we believe that Putin should suppress immediately within 48 hours. Otherwise, just not to suppress. That was a deal between two bandits, mediated by the third bandits. In fact, now people can realize what the face of the power, of Putin's power, of Putin's authority is. That's why just I'm sure that ordinary Russians, but especially right now, there are people, people in the Putin's ruling elite would start reconsidering attitude to him. I think that we should take this as a Putin's defeat, not crush as it could be in the future when the Ukrainian counteroffensive would achieve. Okay. But, um, but Prigozhin started in the beginning, ahead of you. Okay, I'm sorry, we're having a bit of a sound challenge, so sorry if I interrupt you uh, from time to time. Um, but uh, Putin is not known to tolerate dissent, right? You yourself had to leave Russia after criticizing his invasion of Ukraine. What do you think could happen to Prigozhin now? Uh, Putin will not forgive him this. Never, never, never. Just Putin's stability for 23 years, which was the basis of his rule, now just put in question. And people understand that there is no stability. And that that's why just Putin made a compromise to, to escape from yesterday's situation. But I think just the uh, uh, survival of Prigozhin is under question. It could happen tomorrow, in one month, could happen in one year. Whether it, he will be in Belarus, Belarus or just somewhere in Africa. I think just Putin would never forgive him that, that this stuff. So he will never forgive him. So what could he want to do to him? Uh, I think he would be liquidated, as Putin sometimes does. What, what do you mean exactly by liquidated, just to be clear? Uh, just, I think, just... It could be it could be an accident with a death or some kind of I don't know what. It doesn't matter much. So the the the, the life of Prigozhin is on stake, and I think just he understands. Prigozhin understands this very well. He goes to Belarus, but I think in a few days he go, will go to Africa and would would be just hiding somewhere there. Mm. 
Okay, does the end of the rebellion mean this is the end of the threat to Putin's power or, in your opinion, just the beginning? Uh, that's that's end end of, of this threat of this of military Wagner group, but it is uh, an, uh, beginning of uh, a general threat of losing power by Putin's by by Putin uh, himself. And I think, as I said, it, this important thing is not people on the streets. People will not go on the streets. They are scared of this. But reconsideration by Putin's friends, by Putin's elite, by big business uh, people, by ministers and other position, people on a, on a serious position, will, they will start reconsidering attitude to Mr. Putin. And in fact, yesterday, the whole situation was seen by everyone that the system doesn't work. Putin's system doesn't work. They, they, they cannot even implement, they cannot defend anything. Just no single, single uh, I would say, attempt of, to prevent this march to on Moscow was, was taken. And as, as I said, two cities, one, one million population each was surrendered. And in fact, and, and, and in fact just uh, everyone realized that the system doesn't work at all. Okay, former Russian Prime Minister Mikhail Kasyanov, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.